The murder of Franco Giuseppucci, a great friend of Abatino, marks a turning point in his life and in the existence of the gang. Giuseppucci, in fact also known as Er Fornareto, was a founding member and leading figure of the group, capable of uniting and bringing together many different and ambitious individuals, who otherwise would have been unlikely to remain united. Giuseppucci was killed by a gunshot fired by Fernando Proietti, a member of a rival group that had suddenly seen its influence on illegal trafficking in the Tor de Valle area diminish. The man shot in the side manages to reach the hospital, but dies anyway. His murder triggers a war between the Banda de la Magliana, once again united under the banner of vengeance against the rival clan of Peschiaroli. Later, Abatino would reveal to the prosecutors his belief that the killing of his friend was linked to his knowledge of having too much information about the murder of Aldo Moro, the Italian prime minister who was kidnapped and killed by left-wing terrorist groups. Maurizio knew the situation of the local criminality well and knew that the rival clan of Proietti, despite the loss of the sphere of influence, would never have gone as far as the murder of Giuseppucci if not under someone else's orders. Another event to remember is the decision to kill Nicolino Celis by the other members of the gang. In fact, Abatino had discovered through a letter that Celis was overly ambitious and in fact treacherous, and for fear of a possible affiliation to Cutolo, which would allow him to rise in the absolute command of the Banda della Maliana, decided to kill him along with the others. Celis was imprisoned in a judicial asylum and was convinced to take a leave of absence with the promise of a reconciliation between the members of the group. The promise was of course worth nothing, and Nicolino was killed on February 3, 1981. Abatino manages to escape from the forces of law thanks to an alibi and is able to continue on with his trafficking. In this period, an internal feud begins within the gang. On one side there is Abatino with the Malianesi, and on the other, the group of Testaccini, De Peris and Abruciati. Abatino enters in deep conflict with Abruciati and accuses him to pursue only his own ambition and not to think about the benefit of the group as a whole. The tensions continue, but at a certain point the police manage to arrest Abatino, following his lover Roberta. The man is imprisoned in May 1983. Now Maurizio is not at all well and perhaps in a moment of madness decides to inject himself with the blood of a sick prisoner. He was later transferred to a clinic in Rome in the Aeor area because he was diagnosed with bone cancer with advanced metastases. And according to the report Maurizio has little time left to live. But as he himself will later reveal his state of health had been falsified by doctors of the prison of Rabibia. Abatino paid 50 million lira to fabricate a diagnosis as a terminally ill cancer patient and pr produce a slide showing tumour cells. To maintain the farce, the criminal also agrees to undergo a cycle of chemotherapy. During his fake stay at the clinic, Maurizio plans to escape, but his relationship with the gang becomes more and more distant. In fact, some of his companions think that Er Crespino is living the good life, hidden and safe, and for this reason they stop giving him financial assistance. Abatino, however, is ready to escape, but only his brother Roberto can help him. So on the night of December 20th, 1986, he slides down from a window using a bedsheet from the second floor without being seen. And if that isn't a classic vintage escape, I don't know what is. He reaches his brother's car with difficulty because his legs are actually no longer used to moving. Maurizio has faked his illness so well that even his companions who stop giving him support are convinced of his precarious state of health. In the following days, he hides and, with the help of a nurse, he returns to his healthy physical form. He'll later recount, A manhunt had opened in Rome that had never been seen before. They were looking for me everywhere. I forged a passport stolen from a friend of my brother and crossed the border into Switzerland. Then from Geneva, I boarded a flight to Rio de Janeiro. Crispino flees to South America because he's hunted by the police and his companions who no longer considered him useful. He manages to hide well, and in the meantime, he continues to expand his trafficking, to make a name for himself abroad and to commit various crimes. He's finally arrested again in Venezuela in 1992, betrayed to the authorities by a simple telephone conversation made with his mother on New Year's Day. After a few months, Abatino is brought to Italy, 
and develops the idea of collaborating with the police. Now, in fact, during his imprisonment, he learns of several plans to eliminate him by different criminal groups. In the prison of La Planta in Caracas, for example, a prisoner had proposed a plan to escape through a tunnel, which had alarmed Crispino and had instilled in him the doubt that someone outside the prison was waiting for him to disappear forever. He also heard the interception of a phone call from a drug trafficking boss who had said, you get him out and we'll take care of it. He had no other choice. If he wanted to survive, he had to collaborate with justice. The betrayal of his former companions and the murder of his brother are certainly factors that contribute to, towards making him talk. Thanks to the criminal's revelations, a big operation called Colosseum starts, which leads to the execution of a maxi trial of the Banda de la Maliana. Despite all the best efforts, the criminal group manages to get away because the court concluded that it was not a mafia-like organisation. The sentence is therefore reduced for all but Abatino, who didn't appeal and is currently still serving a 30-year sentence. Er Crispino has certainly been a boss who has left his mark, not only in the criminal world, but also in the collective imagination. His figure has inspired the character of the Fredo of a famous Italian criminal novel, then movie and series named Romanzo Criminale. The work is in fact inspired by the events that involve the Banda della Maliana, and in a sense tells a dark and violent part of a recent Italian history. Interesting story, as are they all. So that's all for this time, thanks so much for watching, and of course all your fascinating comments which we do read and of course appreciate. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and with lots more videos coming soon. Until then, ciao!